QuickBooks Desktop 2023 Sales by Customer and Sales by Item Reports. Let's do it with Intuit QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop Sample Rock Castle Construction Practice File provided by QuickBooks going through the setup process we do every time. Maximizing the homepage to the gray area, going to the view drop down, noting we got the hide icon bar and the open windows checked off. Open windows open on the left hand side. Reports drop down, company and financial. Let's look at that PL profit and loss with the range into the change in from 010124. 123124 January to December. Customize it with the fonts and numbers so we can change the font to 12 so we can see it. Is that okay? Yeah, it is. Okay. And then we're going to go to the reports drop down again. Company and financial. Take a look at the big balance sheet. We'll change it this time with a drop down to this fiscal year. Customize it. Fonts and numbers. Changing it to 12 so we can see it. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that's what we do. Why did you do that so fast? Because we do it every time. That's the setup process that we do every time. We're going to look at some subsidiary reports, remembering that these are the two major financial statement reports. Pretty much every other report we look at, we want to think of it as an expansion of one or multiple line items of these two major financial statement reports, balance sheet, income statement, or profit and loss. This time, we're going to the P&L. We're going to the P&L, profit and loss report. We're looking at the income line item. That's us generating revenue. So that's kind of like the goal of the business is our revenue generation. I'm going to compact this looking at just simply all of the normal kind of income type of accounts condensed together. And now we're going to look at some reports that are going to give us more detail on this income line item. So how might that happen? How might they give us more detail? Well, note when we put our income items here, we typically record them in terms of what we are doing to generate the revenue. So we, we might call it just like bookkeeping revenue. If we do bookkeeping or accounting revenue or something like that, uh, or we might sell something and just call it sales revenue or sales of inventory revenue or something like that. And we're trying to keep the income line items fairly, not too many of them. You shouldn't have a whole lot of income line items because the general idea is that we're only concentrating on one or two things generally to generate revenue and everything else we're basically paying for. So we have a bunch of different kinds of categories of expenses, but not many categories of income. Now notice you could add more categories of income, but you wanna be careful and understand how the subsidiary reports work because sometimes people get into the, to the habit of creating a bunch of income accounts like for for their main customers, for example. And if you're using a full accounting system, which we'll talk a little bit more about later, you don't really want to do that. You, want, you don't wanna create an income account per customer because you can create subsidiary reports that will break out this income item by customer, kind of similar to the subsidiary reports we saw for accounts receivable and accounts payable, breaking out AR by customer, breaking out AP, by vendor. So the other thing that people tend to do is have too many subcategories by what they sell. So for example, too many different service categories and just saying, instead of just saying this is the services we provide or too many inventory categories that they put on the profit and loss. Again, you don't need to do that if using a full service bookkeeping system because you want all that added report on the subsidiary reports rather than having it all muddying up your main central report here. This should be kind of like the summary of the income line items. Okay, so so now we're going to expand on that with the added two main kind of groupings you would expect, 
breaking this out by customer, breaking this out by item, in other words, inventory items, sales items. You could find those reports under the reports dropdown. We can go into the sales item, which stands for like revenue, and here's all the reports that way. Or we could go into the report center. Let's do that now. Let's go into the report center. Let's maximize it because it unmaximizes every time, which is annoying, but that's okay. We could do I could deal with that. I could deal with that. We're going to go to the sales on the left hand side. Here's our reports. We got the sales by customer summary, detail, the sales by ship to address if applicable. If you have inventory pending sales, you got your graphs and then you've got your sales by items, meaning inventory items and uh, service items. The things you do to generate revenue, you got the detail report on that and then if applicable sales by rep and so on. So let's go to this first one up top. Let's go to the sales by customer summary. Opening that one up, let's change the date range from a 10124 to 123124. There we have it. Let's make it a little bit larger because we're gonna spend some time on it, customizing it, fonts and numbers in it, checking the font or changing the font to in it, and then 12 in it, and then yes in it, and okay in it. So there we go. So now we've got the income broken out by customer, which of course, can be a quite useful report when we're trying to analyze our advertising or marketing, who our best customers are and so on. You could also sort it up top. You could sort this one by total. So now you can you could sort it by total, possibly Z to A. So you got the big customers up top, which would be a common kind of thing. This is another report that we might in later presentations export to Excel so that we can possibly create graphs and whatnot with this kind of report. Now here, they have a lot of like jobs in this particular, because it's a, it's a job cost system, which makes this report a little bit more convoluted because of that. But uh, so it might make the exporting a little bit more complicated. We won't get into that in detail here, but just note it might look a little bit more complex than a report would be if you don't have the jobs. Okay, so then uh, note if I go to the home page over here, we kind of have to have an understanding of our accounting process to know how these reports will work. We're looking at the sales cycle or accounts receivable cycle. And remember, we might have a cash basis or we might have an accrual basis. And this could impact how these subsidiary reports will work with regards to sales. So remember, like if you have a system where you're waiting till something clears the bank, like using gig work, like you work for YouTube or something and YouTube pays you, you wait till it clears the bank and then you record the deposit when it clears possibly with bank feeds, that's fine, but you're probably gonna lose some of the added detail because the deposit form is not the form that is naturally used, not designed to be used for creating uh, increases to sales because the invoice and the create sales receipt are the two forms, one accrual, one a cash-based method for that. So note that if you go into a deposit form and you're imagining like you wait till something clears the bank feeds and you enter it, the bank feed will still typically have the name of, of who you got the money from, like YouTube or whatever. And you can copy that and you want to copy that and put that into who you receive the money from uh, here so that you can track that in some ways, but you still might not be able to generate the same kind of subsidiary reports because again, the deposit form isn't designed to be, to be tracking the income line items. So you could also have a system where you're on basically a cash-based system, but you're entering the information into a check register. In that case, you'd be using the create sales receipt form, which of course is designed to be, to be uh, putting together the sub-ledgers, so it will be tracking the customers and, and the items. And so notice when I go into this form, for example, then of course we got the customer up top and we also have the item down below. And so the item is another way that we can track by. If you enter the stuff just into a deposit form, you're not gonna have the items and therefore clearly you're not gonna be able to track a subsidiary ledger by item. So ju just a couple things to keep in mind. Now, if I go back to the sales by customer report and we go all the way to the bottom, this total down here you would expect should tie out to the total for the income line items on the profit and loss report in a similar way as the total of the subsidiary reports for accounts receivable aging reports for example should tie out to the accounts receivable so but it won't be exact in this case i don't believe 452 943 and if we go here 
and we see it's 454.6, so it's a little bit off. And you might say, well, how can that be? Why is it off? Notice if you looked at the balance sheet and we looked at the accounts receivable, has a subledger broken out by customer, and it's almost always exact, like it's not exactly. Why is that the case? Because every time we enter something to accounts receivable, QuickBooks actually forces us to add a customer. That's not the case with the sales items. So in other words, if I go to the home page here, clearly if you use these two forms, then uh, it's then you're going to you're going to have the information that's going to track and these if these were the only two forms you used, you would be forced to have a customer, your subledger would tie out. However, if you used another form to record revenue, such as a deposit form and possibly didn't even add a customer or something like that, QuickBooks will allow you to do that, and that kind of thing will throw off your subledger reports. You can also imagine if you went in and made an, an adjusting entry by going to the, the company dropdown and made just a journal entry. If I made a journal entry to accounts payable, for example, it would make me have a vendor here. If I made a, a, a journal entry to income, on the other hand, it would not force me to have a customer and therefore I can record something and it'll throw off the subledger. That's not necessarily a bad thing because sometimes when you do adjusting entries, you don't want to enter it to a customer and then you're going to reverse it and whatnot. But that's just something to keep aware of because the subledger could be off and you can try to figure out why it's off, what kind of income was reported or whatnot that wasn't uh, using a customer and kind of see what the difference is. So there's the, there's the sales by customer report. We might make graphs out of it in future presentations. Let's see what else we have in the reports. We've got the sales by customer detail. So if I go into the sales by customer detail, now we've got it broken out by customer. And then we got the stuff that we sold to them. And of course, the stuff that we sold to them is going to be in the form generally if using a full service system, invoices and sales receipts. Again, if you're recording income with deposits, you probably not it's probably not going to show up on this report because this report is gathering the things that are recording sales that the system was designed to use to record sales sales receipts and invoices so i'm going to close this back out and then you've got the sales by ship to if applicable you've got the pending sales you've got a sales graph we'll start we'll make the graphs later and we'll talk about them later and then the other major category is sales by item item in this case meaning inventory item or service items the things that we sell in order to generate revenue from customers running that report going to say tab 01012412324 on the range so there we have it now if you sell inventory items it's going to be a bit more complex of a report because now you've got the quantity the amount the percent of sales the cost of goods sold and so on and so forth if you have just the the uh, service items then it'll be a bit more easy of a report to read but these are going to be the the items that were that were sold broken out not by customer but by the things sold or the services sold so if i go to the profit and loss here we we have then the, the p and l the p and l represents the category that we sold within service items inventory items for example and then we could break it out by customer who we sold them to which should come up to the same number in theory or we can break it out more in detail about what exactly we sold not just service items or inventory items as a whole but which service items and inventory items and that's the attempt of this report giving us that detail so so if we get to the bottom of this report we get to the 452 943 25 which should tie out to the 454 right here it doesn't because once again quickbooks doesn't force us to tie those things out meaning every time we we hit the income account or an income account we don't necessarily have to add an item so if i go to the home page for example this is one where clearly if you use a deposit form such as in bank feeds to enter the data there is no items field in it right so there, there's no point there's nothing in here that tells you what you actually sold so if you use this then you, you want to make sure that you're saying okay well that may it still makes sense it's easier for me to use the deposit form if i'm in like gig work uh, and I, I and i recognize i'm going to lose some of the subsidiary data reports for it 
and I'm fine with that. You, that's the kind of decision making you want to have. Or if you want those added detailed reports, then you're going to have to use the sales receipt, even if on a cash based method, because the sales receipt is the one that has the item tab down here, which will track what you are selling. And that includes service items. So, so it would be nice, like in a full service system, even if you're on a cash basis, even if you're doing service items, to be able to track the different service items you know that you are having so that you could run those subsidiary reports which can give you a bit more detail but it i mean it really depends on the particular industry that you are in as to whether that added detail is worth the added time if it's causing more data input uh, issues so there it is so that's that report those are the two common uh, reports that you can break them out by. If we go back into the report center, we've got the sales by item detail. So now you're going to get similar report with the detail related to it. If you have sales reps, then you can have the sales by the sales rep, sales by sales rep detail.